So today, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, we will be here in New Jersey <coughs> in Augusta. On this eighth Sunday, it's a couple of days after the tomorrow, the uh, motu proprio of Pope Francis of uh, Traditionis Custodes. And the epistle here is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. Brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you shall die. But if by the Spirit you mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. For whosoever are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again in fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption of sons, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. For the Spirit himself giveth testimony to our spirit, that we are the sons of God, and if sons, heirs also, heirs indeed of God, and joint heirs with Christ. And the Gospel, taken according to St. Luke, chapter 16. At that time, Jesus spoke to his disciples this parable. There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said to him, How is it that I hear of this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for now thou canst be steward no longer. And the steward said within himself, What shall I do, because my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship? To dig I am not able, to beg I am ashamed. I know what I will do, <clears throat> that when I shall be removed from the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Therefore, calling together every one of this Lord's debtors, he said to the first, How much dost thou owe, my Lord? But he said, A hundred barrels of oil. And he said to him, Take thy bill, and sit down more quickly, and write fifty. And then he said to another, And how much dost thou owe? Who said, A hundred quarters of wheat. And he said to him, Take thy bill, and write eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward, for as much as he had done wisely. For the children of this generation of this world are wiser in the generation than the children of light. And I say to you, make it you friends of the mammon of iniquity, that when you shall fail, they may receive you in everlasting dwellings. Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. <laughs> and the Father's only goes to men. <clears throat> few considerations a few days after this uh, motu proprio of Pope Francis of uh, <clears throat> called Traditionis Custodes in which he lays out that uh, more restrictions for the Latin Mass and uh, throughout the conservative world there is a attack against Pope Francis that Pope Francis is the enemy of tradition. Pope Francis has been trying to smash the Latin Mass. Pope Francis is wicked. That everyone is, it sees how bad Pope Francis is. I remember back in 2012 in our Society of St. Pius X, <clears throat> we used to say that the changes in the society are because of Bishop Follet. And Bishop Follet has uh, always been trying to be modernist. And Bishop Follet is the one who's leading the society down the path towards modernist Rome and away from the truth and in the wrong direction. But that uh, get rid of Bishop Follet and everything will be fine. And we see this happening right now again in the, in the larger scale of the church at large that uh, we have a crisis in the church. And the crisis is Pope Francis, Pope Francis, and Pope Francis. That Pope Francis is a mason, an infiltrator of the church. Pope Francis is wicked. Pope Francis desires to destroy the Latin Tridentine Mass, and that Pope Benedict is weeping, and Pope Benedict is sorrowful, <clears throat> and that Pope Francis has neglected the movements and the positive developments of the last years, how Sumor Pontificum brought us forward in bringing the Latin Mass more available, and how so much good was accomplished during the reign of Pope Benedict XVI, and now it's being undone by Pope Francis. In the realm of the, of the police, one of the ways in which you capture a criminal is you have two cops. 
-hmm. One is called the good cop and the other is called the bad cop. And who is the one that gets you convicted? Who is the one that gets you put in jail? And who is the one that destroys you? He is the one that's called the good cop. The bad cop, he says bad words, he calls you evil, he threatens you, he says mean things. And the good cop says to the bad cop, don't say that. That's not nice. Don't treat him like that. And what does this do? It causes the criminal to put confidence in the good cop. And then the good cop pulls the criminal aside and says, you can confide in me. And so he confides in the good cop. Later on, there's a trial. The bad cop is nowhere to be seen. He's off doing something else. But the good cop shows up at the trial, and he stands at the trial, and he is the witness who says, I heard this man say that he was at such and such a place, he did such and such a thing, and he is in fact a criminal, and he should be executed, he should be arrested. He is, a, he is in fact a big problem. Meanwhile, the, the, the criminal, he can't believe it. This was my friend. This was the cop I trusted. And he's the one standing on the stand and he was convicting me. I can't believe it. So there's a good cop and there's a bad cop. And it's a famous routine that police officers have in order to deceive criminals. Who's the one that deceives? Not the bad cop. Who's the one that destroys? Not the bad cop. Who's the one that makes you go to prison for the rest of your life? He is called the good cop. When history looks over, the good Pope, bad Pope, good Pope Francis, or good Pope Benedict, and bad Pope Francis, history will show that bad Pope Francis was not so bad. And good Pope Benedict was not good at all. Good Pope Benedict was the one who made possible for bad Pope Francis to become Pope to begin with. Because good Pope Benedict who on this day of July the 18th, 2021, is still alive. And if he was following the law of God, he would still be the active Holy Father right now. But he resigns. And the only reason that we have bad Pope Francis is because good Pope Benedict made him Pope. A deal was made back in the 2005 conclave that was made public and that deal was, I'll be Pope for a few years, Cardinal Ratzinger, and then I will resign. And then you, who were the runner-up in the 2005 conclave, that is Bergoglio, you will become the Pope after me. And after a few years, sure enough, Pope Benedict fulfilled his part of the bargain. And he resigned. And then Pope Francis became the Pope, only because of Pope Benedict. The bad Pope is only Pope because of Benedict. Therefore, one should not blame the bad modo proprio of July the 16th, 2021 on bad Pope Francis. It was good Pope Benedict that made this modo proprio possible. Second, what about good Pope Benedict? Good Pope Benedict, before he became Pope, he was Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger. And in 1987, he sat across the table from Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. And Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, the founder of the Society of St. Pius X, the one who saved the Catholic priesthood by consecrating four bishops, who saved this priesthood in June of 1988. And that end of 1987, he sat across the table with Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, and he said to him, man to man, you, Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, you personally, are working for the de-Christianization of society. We are working for the Christianization of society, therefore we cannot work together. The saint, Marcel Lefebvre, the defender of the faith and the truth, Marcel Lefebvre, Archbishop, spoke to the Cardinal, Joseph Cardinal Ratzing, who had already shown his true colors, who had already demonstrated since the Council that he was an enemy of the truth, that he is an enemy of the faith, that he is a full-blown, 100% modernist, who already was working to destroy the Society of St. Pius X from within. It was Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger that sent seminarians into the seminary of, of, of Econ to infiltrate it and undermine it. But they were found out in 1987. 
and they were removed. Nine of these seminarians sent by Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger. Now what happened? Cardinal Ratzinger made a deal with Dom Girard. You, you can celebrate the new Mass with me, Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, and you betray our Trisha Lefebvre, and you betray Catholic tradition in 1988, and I will make you an abbot, and your monastery, which began in tradition, shall be approved by modernist Rome, and we will let you be approved. And, and, and the Dom Girard, the French abbot of the Benedictine Monastery, agreed. And he was the president of the Consecrations of 88, immediately after betrayed the Archbishop, and come celebrated the new Mass at the command of Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger. And the monastery of, of Lombaru in France was done in. And then the monastery in, in Brazil broke away and stayed faithful to tradition under Adam Thomas Aquinas. Then this, this, this archbishop, this cardinal, required that the Novus Ordo Mise be celebrated and come celebrated by Mahesinger Bach before he could approve, approve of his order of the Institute of Christ to King. And he made, the, uh, he made a profession of faith, a new profession of faith in 1989, written by Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, <clears throat> which included the acceptance of the no modernist teachings of Vatican II as part of the, as part of the teaching of the church, and that the profession of faith required the acceptance of the heresies and errors of Vatican II. And this profession of faith had to be, had to be professed by any one of the new members of the fraternity of St. Peter that he established. He required that this new fraternity of St. Peter would not be allowed to exist unless it officially approved of the Novus Ordo Mise. Later on, it was he who made sure that in 1999, that the, that, that the 16 priests who disobeyed Father Busy, that they would be the ones who, would have, who, who, who celebrated the new Mass against the wills of the, of the superior of the fraternity of St. Peter. He told them, Gardner Ratzinger was the one that arranged the decree that came from John, Pope John Paul II, that those, those 16 priests had the right to celebrate the new Mass, and every priest of fraternity of St. Peter had the right to celebrate the new Mass, and they need not ask permission, Furthermore, it is a requirement that every single, that there be a representative of the fraternity of St. Peter that goes to the chrism Novus Ordo Masses and comes celebrates those Masses with the local Novus Ordo Bishop in order, in order to show their fidelity. Who required the celebration of the new Mass? And on what day? Holy Thursday. The day in which it is traditionally forbidden to have more than one Mass. And on that day, they must come celebrate with the Bishop who required that? Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger. He is the one also who is the author of Summorum Pontificum. Now read the documentation, the requirements of Summorum Pontificum. One little minor point to note, Summorum Pontificum. In Summorum Pontificum, it states that these decrees of Summorum Pontificum, which are freeing up the Latin Mass more than Quattro Arriganos and more than Ecclesia Dei Inflicta, they, they replaced the requirements of those two documents with an expanded indult. And we declare that the Latin Mass of all time is an extraordinary form, which means it is not the ordinary form of the Church. The first Pope in history to declare the 2,000-year-old Mass, the immemorial Mass, to not be the Mass of the Church. But the Mass of the Pope of Rome for the last 1,900 years that this Mass is not the Mass of the Church. It is an extraordinary form that is, that is not the ordinary form. The ordinary form is the one according to the order, according to the, the way of the decree, the way things must be. Who was the one that made that satanic statement? His name is Pope Benedict XVI, the former Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger and the present Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger because he is no longer the Pope. And then what did he say also in that Sumor Pontificum? He said, among one of the minor decrees noted in the, in the, in the 12 articles of Summorum Pontificum, I believe it's 12 articles, he said that the Latin Mass may be celebrated according to the 1962 Missal, and the, and the Epistle and the Gospel and the readings may be done in English or in the vernacular. Come forward to Article 3 of the, of the document of July the 16th, 
2021, of Pope Francis, the successor of Pope Benedict. And he says that the Epistle and Gospel must be done in the vernacular and when you're celebrating the, new, the Latin mm -hmm. Trinity Mass. The difference is, Benedict XVI said, may be done, and Benedict, Pope Francis said, must be done. Pope, uh, Pope Benedict said, I am allowing the Latin Mass, which was never abrogated, whatever that means, and even though it was never abrogated, that means he cannot approve of it because it's already approved. That means he can't make laws about it because it already has laws that, that, are, that, are, that are about the Latin Mass, laws made by St. Pius V. And Pope Benedict XVI says, well, I'm going to make laws about it. And the law is that you're going to be a more free celebration of this Mass for an experimental period of three years and that, and that it will take effect by September the 14th of this year, 2007. All other decrees notwithstanding. He therefore it says officially in his documentation that the indult of 84 was correct. The indult of 88 was also correct. And that he is replacing it with a new indult according to his own personal will. He also states that this, this personal will is to be analyzed, to be assessed, and then to see whether or not Suwama Devagum can continue. It was not his statement, nor his expressed wish, that this be an eternal document. It was not written as a new quote primum. This is an interpretation put upon it by those who have what's called wishful thinking. It is not in the quote primum, in, in the document, Sumora Modificum. And also, it is, it is it, everything stated in the, the uh, document, modo proprio, traditionis custodes, not one of those do decrees of uh, Pope Francis is anti-contrary to the decrees of Pope Benedict. Pope Benedict said in Samorum Pontificum, and in the letter that accompanied it, it is already a given and understood fact that there be no confusion or fear amongst the bishops, let all the bishops of the world know we are not allowing anyone to celebrate this Latin Mass who does not unequivocally accept the Novus Ordo Nice. It says that multiple times in the, in, in the letter accompanying the publication of Simona Matificum by Pope Benedict XVI in 2007. Let it be known that no one can celebrate the Latin Tridentine Mass according to the bulls, according to the Moda Proprio, Simona Matificum, unless they fully accept the new Mass and Vatican II. There is no threat in the Samorum Divicum against Vatican II. And we are, we are willing the desires of Ecclesia Dei Inflicta of Pope John Paul II, which is to help those followers of Archbishop Lefebvre who got involved in his schism to come back to the church and to those who have a, still have an affection for the former Mass may come to realize the beauty and the wonder and the magnificence of the ordinary form. This is what is said by Pope Benedict the Sixteenth in 2007, and no one was scandalized. It is repeated by Pope Francis, and what do they say? The conservatives, the neoconservatives, they say Pope Francis is saying now we have to accept the new mass. Pope Francis is saying now we can't have our Latin mass unless we accept the unique new Mass. Francis would never, Benedict would never do that. Buy a pair of glasses. <laughs> Go to read the original handwritten document in Rome if you want to do that. Read the document, Sumorum Pontificum. Read the letter that is contained in it. And I defy you to find the contradictions between that letter and the motu proprio so, traditionis custodes of July the 16th, 2021. There are no contradictions. The conditions are essentially the same. No one can have a Latin Mass unless they approve of the new Mass, which is the reason why we have always told our faithful, do not go to the end of Mass. Do not go to the motu mess. Don't go to the motu proprio Mass which is the same thing, but a different name. Why not go? Because the condition of going to that Mass equals the acceptation of Vatican II, the acceptation of the new Mass. 
And in case you have any doubts, go visit the church. Go visit the churches where they celebrate the Moto Proprio Mass. They also celebrate the new Mass. Go to the churches of the Institute of Christ, the Gate of Eternity of St. Peter. They must accept the new Mass, and they must come and celebrate the new Mass along with the local bishop, unless there be any confusion. And they must accept the new Code of Canon Law, which is Vatican II in practice. They must accept the new Mass, and they cannot live without it. Furthermore, their priests have celebrated the new Mass, and they cannot and have not been condemned. And so many priests have left the fraternity of St. Peter. I know some of them myself, who were, who, who, myself, who were friends, and who actually were members of the Society of Christ Saints Seminary when they got ordained in the fraternity of St. Peter. They are now celebrating the Novus Ordo Mise. I know multiple priests, many priests, who belong to the fraternity of St. Peter. And after belonging to it, it became a place for them to step into the new Mass. One priest I've known for many, many, many years, he's now celebrating the new Mass. In Australia, another one celebrating the new Mass in the United States. The new Mass is being celebrated everywhere. They are celebrating the Novus Ordo Mise. And they have, the, the, so the Church of St. Peter has been a funnel to bring priests from tradition to the new Mass. That's exactly what it has been. A funnel to bring people from tradition to the new Mass. That is precisely what it has been. And so when we look at this problem, of Summorum Pontificum, or rather, Traditionis Custodes. Do not listen to the neocon conservatives who are saying over and over again, boy, Pope Francis is bad. Pope Francis is going against tradition. Pope Francis is going against the, 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 the way of the church. Pope Francis has a different spirit than that of John, of, of, uh, John Paul II, a different spirit than that of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. He is only Pope he is only Pope because of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. He is only, and he is in his teaching. You can switch it out. So if, 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 in his teaching, in his teaching, the fact is he is only following their directives. One of the great mysteries of the whole reign of Pope Francis is that there is an incredible scandal over everything he says, an incredible scandal over everything he does. And you discover that every single thing he says and every single thing he does is 100% in conformity with Vatican II. And everything he says and does was already taught by Pope Benedict, by Pope John Paul II, by Pope Paul VI, by the council. All he is is the council being put into practice fully. That's all he is. And yet, in order to deceive traditional Catholics and bring them away from Christ, they are being told, good cop, bad cop. The good cop equals Pope Benedict. The bad cop equals Pope Francis. And if we only get rid of Pope Francis, if we unite the clans against Pope Francis, if we stand strong against Pope Francis, everything will be fine. Too much evil is being placed upon the head of Pope Francis. He isn't the most wicked pope. He was made Pope by the most wicked Pope. He isn't the greatest evil. And there isn't anything that is in this document that was not already in the council. There isn't. And there isn't anything in this document that was not already in So Sovorum Pontificum and in Ecclesia de Inflicta and in Quaquarianos, right down to the details. Quaquarianos says, you can't have mass in parochial churches. This new document says, don't have mass in parochial churches. Sumor Bodegum says, there should be a proclamation of the epistle and gospel and the readings in English. This one says, there must be readings in English. And then the, the, can all the three previous documents say, you cannot have your Latin mass without the explicit acceptance of the new and under the directive of the whims and arbitrary wishes of the local bishop. And now it's the same way now. All that has happened is there are a few extra restrictions. So what must be done? The priests of the, of the Novus Ordo and the priests of the various so-called conservative organizations should stand up and say, Satis, enough. I am going to say the Latin Trinity Mass only. I'm no longer celebrating the new Mass. I'm going to teach the true faith only. 
I'm not going to follow this modernist baloney. And they looked at the Society of St. Pius X, and what do they see? Nothing. There has been no official statement yet from the Society of St. Pius X. They're looking at the Society of St. Pius X to say, what are we supposed to do? And the Society of St. Pius X is being quiet. Because they're going to make sure that they half approve of what is going on. That's what's happening in the Society of St. Pius X. They are not standing for the truth. They are not helping the souls go to God. They are not doing it. This is the crisis in which we find ourselves. But in any case, that uh, the Society of Pius X is failing its mission, and it will see that it is not at all doing the work of God, and the result is souls are being lost. Stand firm for the truth. Stand firm for the faith. Don't play games with truth and error. And then God will bless those that stand for that truth. And remember, Pope Francis, Pope Francis, Pope Francis, he's not the problem, he's not the problem, he's not the problem. Heresy is the problem, modernism is the problem. The Novus Ordo Misi itself, which was not invented by Pope Francis, it was invented by Paul VI. That's the evil problem. Vatican II, Pope Francis did not make Vatican II. Pope Francis is not the problem. The problem is that there is Vatican II. The problem is the, is the, uh, the new mass. Each of these problems is not Pope Francis. And the problem in person is Pope Benedict XVI, the former pope. And some believe he still is pope, but he is not. He has been a great cause of confusion in the church and will be seen in history as one of the great evil men of the history of the Catholic Church. And, that, that, and yet, he is seen as a good one, the holy one, the nice one, the gentle one. And we will see, when history has finished its writing, that this is not the case at all. So many souls have been lost because of Simorum Pontificum. So many souls have been lost because of Ecclesia Dei et Ficta. So many souls have been lost because of the false bringing back of the new Mass and by making it of the traditional Mass in such a way that it is no longer, it is not brought back with the tradition, it is not brought back with the faith. But now it's time for the priests of these fake traditional movements to say, I'm no longer going to be part of this fake traditional movement. I'm ready to go into the catacombs. I'm ready to go back into exile. I want to stand and will stand for the true faith without compromise. And I will gather souls around in order to hold the truth and not go towards error and heresy. That's what I'm going to do. And this is what must be done in order to preserve our faith in this great crisis in the church. Don't blame everything on Pope Francis. Don't blame everything on the one man who is not responsible for Vatican II, not responsible for the new mass, not responsible for the directives which he re-implemented, not responsible for the open door left by Pope Benedict XVI. Not responsible for his own papacy. He would not be able to be at the conclave. He's 84 years old. He would not be eligible to be at the conclave if Benedict had stayed Pope like he should have. And he could not have done the evil that he has done in the last nine years of his papacy unless Benedict made it possible, unless Benedict made him Pope. Unless Cardinal Ratzinger was behind it, just like Annas was behind the wickedness of Caiaphas. So likewise, Pope Benedict is behind, Cardinal Ratzinger is behind the wickedness of Pope Francis. And there's no point in looking at him as good cop, bad cop, like a foolish criminal. But rather see the good cop and the bad cop are on the same team, and they are both the enemies of the truth. I'm going to bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.